So it is a good fortune to have His Grace Chaitanya Charan Prabhu here with us today. And Prabhuji would be enlightening us by talking about the topic from fighting Indra to exhorting Indra to kill him. So Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you so much Prabhuji, um, then with Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for giving us your valuable time today and association. Um, I would like to hand over the call to you now. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Om Gyan Timirandhasya Gyanan Jirishalakaya Chakshurum Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Itinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Prachari Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashya Tideshitarine Pancha Kalpataru Eschya Kripa Sindhu Bhavacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasa Vigaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna. So today we continue our discussion on the pastime of Ratrasur and his transformation from demoniac to extraordinarily devoted. Yesterday I talked about the first part of the session, how within our consciousness there are conscious, subconscious, and unconscious levels of exp- of levels or layers of experience and impressions that we have. So conscious is what we are aware of. It's like what is on the computer screen or what is where our flashlight in the room is focused. The subconscious is or what is the data in the computer but it is not yet opened. So it's like the various things in the room on which the flashlight is not there. And the unconscious is like the hidden files in the computer, like the data under, like the things under a trap door in a house. So our actions normally are shaped by the conscious and the subconscious. The unconscious also shapes, but it's at a very, very subtle level, which is often not visible. And in this life, when we we act in particular ways, it could be, our mentality could be shaped by the birth, by the samskaras from the previous life, by the kind of parents from whom we are born, and also from the kind of upbringing that we get. And then beyond these three factors, uh, which shape our upbringing, there are also uh, three other factors that is, as we grow up, the kind of association we have that also shapes our behavior. Then there is also the kind of also the still apart from all these, we have our free will, and how we use our free will also determines the nature of our actions. And beyond them, ultimately, is Krishna's grace. So Krishna's mercy can manifest and change things in a dramatic way. So these various factors, the factors from the previous life, the Pura Samskara, the factors from this life, that is the Janma and the the lineage and the upbringing, along with the association, they all push our free will in particular ways. They push, but they don't force. And we can, we always have the capacity to counter push so that our free will uh, can actually be used to resist some of those influences. Uh, sometimes all these three, four influences can act in one way. If somebody was an alcoholic in the previous life, now they are born in an alcoholic family, and uh, they grow up seeing their parents drink alcohol. And then even when they grow up, the locality in which they live, everybody is drinking alcohol. So then previous and this life factors all combine together to push them in a particular direction to drink alcohol. So 
when krishna's mercy comes in the picture krishna's mercy can act in two ways one is that the by his mercy we can our free will gets more power to push back when we are pushed in a particular direction to resist or to push back our free will its power increases if a boulder has to be pushed uphill and if the boulder is very big then it will push us down it will roll over us but if we become stronger then our capacity to push it decreases increases and so conversely the boulder uh, becomes keep becoming bigger and bigger if say it is a mud boulder or a snow boulder a snowball and as it's accumulating more and more mud or snow and growing bigger then also pushing it will be difficult but if it becomes smaller and pushing it will become easier so krishna's mercy can either increase our capacity to push by making us stronger krishna's mercy can also come by decreasing the size of the boulder the boulder here i am using to refer to all the factors from the previous life from the previous life as well as this life till now now here we are using one boulder which is pushing us which is pushing us down and we are pushing it up but this there may not be one boulder like that the boulder example is simply for a uh, simple understanding i said i gave the example also of ocean in which there are current different there may be different currents and different layers so we see that the previous life and this life the previous life not the previous life whole life, for utrasur but the previous life curse and this life birth and this life upbringing even this life association all of them that pushing utrasur to act in demonic ways and when he sees indra discouraged he actually is still very angry and he first speaks according to his demonic nature and he says oh indra you wretched person you are actually a killer of your own brother you are a killer of your guru and you are a killer of your killer of my brother your killer of a brahmana your killer of my guru of your guru because because he had kill vishuru he said therefore i will punish you and i will kill you so he says over here this is text 15 611 15 yo no agrijasyat navido vijate गुरोर पापस्तिचदीक्षितस्य therefore i will kill you today and i will attain peace for having for your having killed my brother i will take revenge for that and then he goes on and says that i will do a yagya to bhairav with your head and the heads of all the gods who have the audacity to uh, fight by you by your side instead of fleeing away in fear we see in the vedic context even the demons are not totally godless even the demons understand that they have they have to worship some higher beings by which they get some power so they just don't believe in vishnu as supreme being and as we are ravana worshiping shiva hiranyakashipu shiva worshiping brahma and here he is saying that i will perform a yagya to bhairava now this was the plan even of jarasand as well as of bana of bhomasura arkasura baaso the bana so the many of the asuras in krishna also had this plan and plan that they will perform some yagya so here all this performing yagya that yagya to a devta is not done out of piety it is done simply it is actually there is some level of piety in it but it is done simply to increase one's power by using the demigods 
uh, as almost like a mechanical tool for gaining that power uh, earlier i mentioned how yagya can be like a weapon is not a weapon manufacturing uh, unit but a warrior manufacturing unit so similarly wanted to perform yagya to increase his prowess but as he is speaking like this navratrasu also has mystic powers and he knows that indra has got a particular astra a vajra not his own ordinary his, his own vajra which is it's indra frame for a thunderbolt it is itself very powerful but indra has got something more indra has got a vajra made from the body of dadichi and that has been given to him as per the plan of vishnu and he knows that he is going to die at the hands of due to that vajra so so after he is exhorting him after he is castigating him saying him that you are, you are a killer and therefore you deserve to be killed and you will be killed mm. he speaks in uh, actually he says that actually he even he, uh, he says that i'll perform yagya to bhairava he doesn't even say that uh, i will use your head i will use the head of the devta as so i stand by you and i will perform a yagya to oh, bhairava with their heads and he says your body i just i will kill it i will destroy it and i will throw it to the vultures you are so sinful that your body doesn't even your head doesn't even deserve to be offered to bhairava because you are the killer of a brahmana so here he is impassioned with anger mm. now but suddenly he says that his mood changes this is text 18 and then text from text 18 onwards his mood changes so he says text is अथो हर हरे मे कुलिशे वीर हर्ता प्रमत्व शिरो यदीह तत्रृणो भूत बलि विधाय मनस्वी पादरज प्रपत्ये नॉर्मली वेन वॉरियर इज फाइटिंग वॉरियर नो एट द बैक ऑफ देर माइंड दैट दे कैन डाय एट एनी मुमेंट इन टूडेज वर्ल्ड and they say bullet will come and may knock them down or kill them down kill them or the pass an arrow or some other missile may knock them down and generally when the warriors are fighting they they actually speak to praise their own strength and to minimize their opponent's strength and this way in war a major factor is intimidation mm-hmm. war is not just a physical confrontation it is also a mental confrontation the person who is mentally stronger their spirit will stay stronger and that person will be able to fight longer as and when necessary so generally warriors do not show any weakness especially when they are confronting other person they express express full confidence that i am going to send you to the abode of death but till this point till text 17 the thrasher is speaking like a typical demon and then suddenly in text 18 he here is moving atho hare me kulishe navira if however oh hare so hare refers to king indra kulishe navira that is like there is a trishula the kulisha revolution is first to hear the thunder bolt if you thunder if you thunder fall o oh, hero veer if you kill me harta pramathai vashiro yajiha if you cut off my head and destroy my army tapanano bhut balim vidhaya then i will bhut balim vidhaya i'll offer my body as a sacrifice for the benefit of all living beings who is the bali means sacrifice so i'll offer it as a sacrifice and then manasvinam padaraja prapatye and in this way i will attain the dust of the manasvi the dust of the lotus feet of the manasvi padarajam 
Manas, Manasvi here refers to great figures like Narad Muni. Now, this doesn't mention the word Narad Muni exclusively, but it's understood from a from his previous life as Narad Muni and Parvat Muni were the two sages who instructed him. So he's saying, "I will attain the dust of their lotus feet. I will attain their association." Now this is a sudden change. Indra himself is startled by this. What is going on over here? And then, now he says, not only does he say that he will entertain the possibility of his death, but then he goes ahead and he starts encouraging Indra, in exalting Indra. Suresha kasman nahino shivajiram purasthite vairini mai yamogham so he says, Ma Samshaistha. Don't have doubt that Nagadeva Vajiraha, that just as your Gada was foiled, that this Vajira will also be foiled. Kya Nishvala Krupanarthe Vayachna. Don't think it will be like a if somebody goes and asks money from a miser then all that one will get from a miser is misery not money the miser will reject will scorn will deride and such a such a appeal yachna is itself useless but that is not the case that is not only the case with you oh friends <clears throat> because I'm going to, uh, because you are, this is a mogha, this is infallible. The weapon, the vajra which you have got is infallible. Suresha kasman nahinoshi vajram. Therefore, O Suresha, O king of the gods, Sura Isha, why are you hesitating? Why are you not throwing your vajra? Do not think that it will not work. This is extraordinary. Normally, a warrior would tell the opposite warrior that your weapons are not going to work. He's assuring him here, he said that what your weapon will surely work. It is infallible. Why would anyone give the opponent the faith that their weapon will work? Generally, when wars take place, there is something called deterrence. Deterrence means that if you do this, then I will do this to you. And because of that fear, the other person will not do that. If you see in the last 30, 40 years, uh, we have not had major wars, although there are major conflict zones. The India-Pakistan had wars in the 1960s, 1960s in 1970. But by the 1990s, both India and Pakistan have developed nuclear weapons. And nuclear weapons act as a deterrent. Even there have not been any major conflicts between, say, USSR and USA after the Cold War, because nuclear weapons act as a deterrent. Now, I'm not supporting nuclear weapons in any way. All that I'm saying is that uh, deterrent is an important factor. Deterrent comes by awareness of the opponent's fearful power to retaliate. So based on that, an opponent may torment a little bit. There might be some below the surface uh, invisible or, uh, or low visibility conflict might go on, but a full-scale war won't break out. Similarly here, normally uh, in order to deter the other the opponent from fighting wholeheartedly, one speaks about the power of one's own weapons and one minimizes the power of uh, the other's weapons. But here he is exhorting, he is encouraging his opponent and is assuring him that your weapon will surely have power. <clears throat> now, how do you say this? Why is it going to work? So, this Vajra is not 
driven by your power, like the Gadawar. So he is telling him that if it's your power fighting against my power, I will be victorious. But it's not your power fighting against my power. It is Vishnu's power. Hare Zadiche Sapasad Ti Gitaha. That Hare, Lord, it is by Lord Hari's arrangement. On top of it, there is Zadiche's power with it. So Te Nai Vashatram Yahi Vishnu Yantrito. Therefore, uh, he uses the word twice. Uh, here the word Hare refers to Hari, Lord Hari. And Vishnu Yantrito. This is arranged by Vishnu. Yato Hari Vijaya Shvir Guna Sataha. And again, he uses the word Hari, third line also. Vijaya Shri. Wherever there is Hari, there will be Vijaya over there. So here we see the manifestation of his Krishna consciousness. Initially, he is looking at the confrontation in horizontal terms. Horizontal terms means that he is looking at this person is supposed to be a god, but he has acted in such an ungodly, brutal, vicious way. And there's a natural enmity between the gods and demons. That is at the material level, it's there. On top of that, he has acted in a demoniac way. He's killed my brother. It's interesting that uh, Putrasur feels this filial, this filial, paternal, brotherly affection, although he has never seen Vishwarupa. He has, Vishwarupa died before he was born. But he understands that I have emerged from the same father, Pashtam. So he still feels that anger towards him. That is the nature of, uh, we could say, family affection. That even the relatives whom we have not seen, even relatives who have passed away before we have taken birth, sometimes our life may be devoted to taking revenge on their behalf. That's how vendetta wars go on, generation after generation after generation. Your grandfather this did to, to did this to my grandfather, therefore I will do this to you. Your grandfather did this to me, and then your my uncle did this to you, but then your father did this to me, and now I'll go on. This will go on. So although he has not even seen Vitras, uh, Vishwarupa, still he is desiring to kill the killer of Vishwarupa. So this is at a horizontal level of consciousness. It's you versus me. But then his consciousness shifts. He doesn't say you versus me. He says beyond you to Krishna. And this is a consistent theme of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, which we could succinctly put as focus not on the wrongdoer, focus on the ultimate doer. Focus not on the wrongdoer, focus on the ultimate doer. Parikshit Maharaj does not focus on um, Shringi who has cursed him to die. In fact, after the first canto, there is practically no reference to Shringi at all. Parishit Maharaj is not feeling more resentment. Why did this boy curse me for a small thing? And he has focused on the ultimate doer. That is, Krishna has some plan and let me just serve him and surrender to his plan. So this, looking at Krishna, this is, we could say, vertical vision. So the horizontal and the vertical, we are normally aware of both things. And there are situations where we serve someone and we serve Krishna through that person also. That we have family members, we take care of the family, care, take care of them. And they also become spiritually inclined, they also start practicing bhakti. Then our horizontal and vertical relationship both work together, both work in parallel. But sometimes they may not work in parallel, sometimes they may work in opposition. When this happens, one has to be extremely uh, cautious not to give up the horizontal musically for the vertical. But here, he's not giving up, he's going to lose. So when he's about to lose the horizontal, he does not keep trying to hold on to it. As Parishit Mahal also did not hold on, he just lets go. So what happens? How does this transformation take place? The Bhagavatam does not explicitly indicate any change in terms of the 
narrative flow it is within the conversation of prithrasur that that two three verses he is speaking as a demon out to kill the natural antagonist of the demon the devta but the next moment he is actually speaking as a devotee and we will see in subsequent verses like when i said don't focus on the wrong doer focus on the ultimate doer we will see sutra mantra sur focus shifting 21st verse he says that he is still speaking to with indra but then from the 22nd verse till 27th verse of the chapter ends he although he is in the battle field although he is facing his opponent he stops speaking to his opponent he starts speaking to vishnu he actually he is he becomes so first there is a conversation then there is a reflection reflection means he stops really speaking to himself he, he starts he stops speaking to indra although he's speaking aloud he is almost like speaking to himself and incidentally addressing indra and then he starts addressing the supreme directly so text 22 describes his move, his more introspective mood now um sam kilai kant dhiyam swakanam ya sampado divibhuva urasayam narati yadvesh udveg adhir madah kalir vyasanam sam prayasah so he says um sam kilai kant dhiyam swakanam so those people par ekant dhiya who are wholeheartedly devoted to the lord to lord vishnu swakanam they are vishnu's own people they are recognized by him these are my people these are my devotees and he asks sampado divi bhuva urasaya he doesn't give them the property which might be available in this world on the earth in the heavens or in the lower planet rasaya because which such such things only bring anxiety narati and dvesh udveg adhir it brings envy it brings anxiety it brings intoxication it brings conflict madik madah kalir vyasanam samprayasah all these come up because of it then you but then what do they do then amazing verse is here this is very similar to kunti maharani's verse where let the calamities come he doesn't pray that let the calamities come but he describes how the calamity is also a mercy trayvargikaya sigha tamasmat bahir vidhatte purushasya chakra tato anumeyo bhagavat prasado yo durlabho kinchana gochero anyai so he says trayvargikaya trayvarga three varga you know there is the apavarga apavarga means the liberation going beyond the categories of material pleasures but before apavarga there is trayvarga trayvarga is dharma artha and kama so trayvargikaya vighatam asmat so normally people people worship god then their idea of success is dharma artha kama but here he says this aspiration vidhatam asmat the lord destroys this and patir vidhatte purushasya chakra oh chakra just consider this is what the lord does to our devotees this as it is our lord patir vidhatte so asmat means our our lord is such that he never give this he actually destroys the plan of his devotees to get this He disrupts it, bighat, and he ruins it. And the two anumeyo bhagavat prasado. So when this is disrupted for someone, then I understand that this is bhagavat prasado. This is actually the mercy of the Lord. But most people think, what kind of mercy is this? This is not mercy. This is cruelty. This is catastrophe. And he says, Oh, Indra, don't worry. You are not going to get this kind of mercy. Yo durlabho akinchen go cheronye. This is a very rare kind of mercy which is given to akinchen go chera. Those who are unalloyed devotees, those who are having no desire except the desire for Krishna. 
There is a famous verse which Krishna also speaks to Yudhishthira, which Prabhupada felt was happening to him in his life. Isyaha manubrahanami harishyetad dhanam shari tatovalham dhujatrasya sajanam dukkha dukkita that one loses everything and everyone, one loses wealth and one loses people in one's life. And if a person has no one except Vishnu to take shelter of. So here, Vitrasul is recognizing that he is going to get a special mercy of the Lord. That mercy which is not ordinarily available to anyone. And then from here onwards, from the 24th was there, very celebrated prayers of Vitrasul, where he discussed where he desires to offer his whole being to the Supreme Lord. Aham hare tava padaika mula dasan daso bhavita sminuya manas mareta supate gunam se gunitva karma karo tikaya. He says, My life, air, my breath, my words, my body, my everything, O oh Lord, I want to offer to you in a mood of service. So here we can clearly see that. His vision has now shifted. It's not even reflection that is a glory that is incidentally being addressed to Indra. It is now direct appeal to the Lord. So by this time, Vitrasura has gone completely into Krishna consciousness. He's practically not aware of the presence of Indra. He's not even aware of being on a battlefield. He's absorbed in the Supreme Law. So this transition from Chaitanya external consciousness to semi-external, semi-internal consciousness to, you could say, internal consciousness. Internal doesn't necessarily mean that he is, uh, he is thinking inwards, he's actually looking upwards over there. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was describing three kinds of consciousness at different times like this. Sometimes he's vaguely aware of externals, sometimes he's fully aware of externals, Somebody, sometimes he would be utterly unaware of externals. So Trasur is transitioning from external consciousness towards internal consciousness, or from could say, horizontal awareness to vertical awareness. From awareness of the wrongdoer to awareness of the ultimate doer. For all of us, this is very instructive. And I'll talk about that as a conclusion, but before that one point, now how does this transition happen for Vitrasa? As I said, the Bhagavatam itself does not, it only describes the transition it does not describe the causes or the mechanisms of the transition. So in the case of Bali Maharaj also, he is initially acting like a charitable person. I'll acting at the level of Punya, giving charity at all costs. But then suddenly, we see in his talks, he changes to the level of Bhakti, where he wants to offer everything to Lord Vishnu. Uh, so this transition actually happens by the mercy of the Lord. The circumstance, some circumstance can act as a trigger. If normally we are caught by the hope of material pleasure or the fear of material trouble. And these two are the primary factors that keep us moving in material consciousness. Material pleasure doesn't necessarily have to mean sensual pleasure. It can be pleasure of the ego. It can be various kinds of pleasure. So it is that pleasure that keeps driving us on. I will get this. I'll get this. I'll get this. I'll get this. Or it may be the fear of material trouble. That, oh, this will go wrong. This will go wrong. This will go wrong. Mm -hmm. But there are times which come in our life when... The fear of material trouble becomes so overwhelming, or rather the material trouble becomes so overwhelming that one realizes that there is just no security at the material level. Normally when we feel that there is something in our control, we try to, we keep trying to do something or the other. But sometimes we face a situation where we realize that there's nothing in my control, nothing that I can do. So when the material adversity becomes overwhelming or when a very big crisis poses itself, present situation in front of us, at that time, that becomes an impetus, like a trigger for us to stop looking at ourselves and our endeavors 
our capacity to endeavor also and to look upwards toward the supreme <clears throat> or sometimes we may get the the material pleasure that we have dreamt of and after getting that pleasure we realize hey, this is nothing this is an anti climax what is the point of seeking this what is the point of getting this it's of no use and that that realization may also prompt us to change our courses to change our consciousness to change our way of thinking and look upwards so for vitra sir the site of indra's vraj, vajra you got indra's vajra actually the vajra given to indra that reminds him of vishnu and as soon as he is reminded of vishnu from the, that site of the gift of vishnu reminds him of his previous life which is devoted to vishnu and that devotion it's triggered it is awakened yeah. and once it is triggered then it takes over for the samskara the, the, the bhakti practice that we have done that lies in the remote background of our consciousness just like sometimes if we have some container of water a tank of water or a small pond of water then suddenly we might see some bubbles coming up over those bubbles come from maybe some fermentation or some action that is happening at the bottom of the well or lower layer of the lower layer of the lake from there it comes up so similarly here uh, in this case on the uh, some trigger from above causes the impressions from the unconscious suddenly surface and they surface from the unconscious to the to the conscious level and then that is where his consciousness becomes fully absorbed so from external to reflection reflective consciousness to internal consciousness that journey happens because what is there in the subconscious unconscious it comes to subconscious uh, and then it comes to its full conscious awareness and just this starts surfacing up so actually it is in this sense that neha bhikram anashosi pratyava yona vidyate whatever bhakti we perform that is never lost forever it, it may be covered it may be covered because by our this life upbringing by our this life uh, choices certain impressions may be formed on our conscious on our conscious level of reality and those impressions may obstruct the growth of our devotion even the man- what to speak of growth even the manifestation of our devotion may be obstructed but when this is at the surface level and when that surface level is disrupted by some some devastating situation then what is below starts manifesting but the situation is not the cause of the manifestation of the devotion the situation is simply the trigger sometimes you may hear some stories about say some devotees they were some proper disciples or some other thing devotees very serious in practicing bhakti and then they get cancer But then when they leave the practice of bhakti or they become lax in their practice and then they get cancer and when they get cancer then they suddenly become serious some devotees and they say that you know that maybe if i am not serious about my bhakti maybe if i get cancer then i also become serious now cancer is not the producer of devotion it is the mercy of the lord which causes us some samskara from the past which we have done that to manifest inspire us to transform and that's what is the cause of devotion otherwise there are millions of people who get terminal cancer and other such terminal diseases they don't become devotees they don't become devotees at that time so for a devotee the mercy of the lord is such that the devotee is able to break free from resentment from revengefulness and focus on the divine and thus the trasa becomes transformed because he completely focuses on the divine and eventually when indra exhorted by vitra cuts off his head actually the cutting off his head is an external event even before that trasa is become absorbed in vishnu and vishnu chakra explains that trasa 
is because of his internal absorption vishnu already has attained vishnu and vitras uh, indra is devoured by vitras through his open huge mouth and indra from inside vitras his body work because he is protected by Vaj- the vajra he doesn't die he works from inside the body to is protected by kavach actually by the armor he works from inside the body to cut off the thrasur's belly and come out and that's when to the world it appears as if he's victorious as if but even before that the thrasur has been victorious because the thrasur by the absorption in uh, vishnu has already attained vishnu so for all of us when we are practicing bhakti when certain people do something wrong to us we have a op- we have a choice of being either resentful or revengeful you know, why did this person do like this to me how dare they do like me they do like that i will show them what i can do or we can see their action as a impetus for folk shifting the focus from the wrong doer to the ultimate doer and that doesn't mean we completely neglect the wrong doer we may have to respond appropriately which means sometimes we may have to take the disciplinary action also like the pandavas did against the kauravas the pandavas were not obsessed with taking revenge against the kauravas otherwise if that had been the case they would not have proposed the shanti dut proposal peace message and they proposed that because they were focused on the ultimate goal and they fought the war also they fought it not so much to take revenge as to serve krishna and assist him in his purpose of establishing dharma during the day to day practice of our sadhana bhakti as we strive to become conscious of the ultimate doer more and more who are japa who are shravan who are uh, puja by this as we strive to become conscious of the ultimate doer more and more then even the routine course of our life we won't be obsessed with the immediate doer the wrong doer but our consciousness will shift to the ultimate doer and then we will respond in a mood of service to the ultimate doer in the mood of service to the ultimate doer sometimes we may just tolerate and forgive the wrong doer sometimes we may decide to take some action against the wrong doer also but our consciousness won't be consumed with the wrong doer our consciousness will be elevated to the ultimate doer and we will act in the mood of service to that ultimate doer and thus we will grow spiritually uh, through even the negativities distresses injustices Uh, that we may face at the hand of the fathers vitrasura attains the supreme victory whereas indra gets only a transitional victory transitional victory is he wins the battle but he wins the battle but indra avatar wins the war against illusion sometimes when we have argument with someone at that time our love for krishna should raise us above the need to win every argument sometimes the ego ego feels the need i have to prove that i am right and you are wrong but if we are devoted to krishna if we have security in our relationship with krishna if we are confident that what i was doing was well intentioned it was rightly done but if somebody has some issues with that if we feel inspired that way at that time then we may decide this is not a battle i want to fight so we may say that there's a question of right and wrong yes but ultimately we have to see that there's right and wrong at the horizontal level there's right and wrong at the vertical level that at the horizontal level indra was wrong to kill vishwarup like that but indra with rasu did not focus on that he focused on what was right at the spiritual level and that was he chose that course of action which will enable him to rise towards vishnu so we may also we at least should not needn't be driven by the need to prove the other person wrong and prove ourselves right we can be driven by the need to move towards krishna and sometimes for moving towards krishna sometimes for serving krishna we may try to uh, argue and prove that we are right and the others are wrong but that need not be the driving need for us we can focus not on who is right in the horizontal argument but we can focus on what is right in the vertical progression 
so sometimes we may willingly accept defeat in an argument but by that we may attain victory in the ultimate purpose of life and this dynamic of defeat at the horizontal level and victory at the vertical level is what the bhagavatam demonstrates repeatedly and especially dramatically through this past time of rutra also i'll summarize i spoke today about the dramatic transformation of the trasu how it happens so i quoted some passages from the trasu past time where in initially he is acting like a typical demon mm, determined to avenge the death of his brother at the hands of indra determined to perform a yagya to increase the power of the demons in his own power a yagya to bhairava but as he is doing this suddenly at one particular moment his consciousness changes he moves from addressing indra to telling him that i'll kill you to addressing indra that you can kill me have confidence normally uh, warfare is not just a physical warfare there is also mental warfare so normally kshatriyas intimidate their opponents by expressing confidence in their own prowess and by deriding the power of the opponent so by this there is a deterrent element by which the opponent may not uh, become excessively aggressive like nuclear deterrence can prevent a full scale war from happening and then talked about how prithrasura's mood changes then from encouraging indra he starts just reflecting internally about the glories of the lord and the lord in concealed form trai guru trai vargi kaya sviga tamasmat patir vidya te purushas kavig or chakra that lord destroys the aspirations of dharma artha kama which is what indra is aiming for indra is dreaming about and he says such is the mercy that is not given to everybody do durlabho akinchin go chere you want to those who are purely devoted and he reveals himself to purely devoted by shifting his consciousness entirely towards the lord so i talked about krishna's mercy it can come in two broad forms if the boulder is pushing us down and we are trying to push it up the boulder can be become weakened the boulder refers to our sanskara from the previous life our our genealogy in this life our upbringing in this life and krishna can also increase our strength to push it up that means our free will which can counter push all these influences now sometimes these influences which are uh, forcing us some of them may be spiritually positive some of them may be spiritually negative so for utrasur most of them were spiritually negative that's why he was acting demonic but there was a spiritually positive influence from his previous life devotion and that manifested when there was when there's a extreme at the material level normally we work in material consciousness with the hope for pleasure or with the fear of trouble to get the pleasure or to avoid the trouble but sometimes the pleasure we get it and we find it pointless and then we start looking for something higher or sometimes the trouble just goes on and on and seems irresolvable irresolvable and then we look for something upwards what can i get what what can i do so the situation however is not the cause of the devotion the situation is simply the trigger the mercy of the lord which activates some past uh, samskara bhakti samskara that is the cause this like water is suddenly ferments from the bottom of a pond upwards and a devotee prays not so much for the calamity the devotee may do that the devotee actually prays for the mercy and for us when we are practicing bhakti when we face external problems especially problem in terms of somebody troubling us too much then instead of staying in horizontal consciousness and becoming resentful or revengeful we can shift to vertical consciousness and try to focus on how best we can serve krishna focus not on the wrong doer focus on the ultimate doer our the test of our devotion is that we are not driven by the ego's need to prove ourselves right in every argument we are ready to do it. just put some argument aside even if we are right is right. that is what is right for our spiritual growth and the trasur although defeated materially 
defeated in the war battle against indra emerges victoriously in the war against illusion thank you very much hare krishna is there any one quick question hare krishna prabhu hare krishna mandavat prabhu uh, could you explain the horizontal and vertical uh, positions that you have mentioned okay what are the horizontal and vertical that i mentioned the horizontal the horizontal and vertical they simply refer to the relationships in this world and our relationship beyond this world say for example the way we interact with each other one jiva interacting with another jiva is horizontal relationship uh but the jiva interacting with jagdish with the supreme lord that is a vertical relationship so we are mostly caught in you did like this to me how and therefore i will do this to you but if you can shift our consciousness okay this person did like this to me but what is krishna trying to teach me through this and how can i serve krishna in this situation and we are focusing on the vertical it focusing on the mood of service to krishna and striving to serve krishna through that situation is that answer your question yes prabhu thank you okay hari krishna any other question yes hari krishna prabhu ji dana pranam yes. all glory to krishna yes. prabhu pat and guru maharaj thank you so much prabhu uh, prabhu i just uh, i want to know uh, that brita sura is in the beginning is to be monik uh, he was demon and then he got uh, suddenly he uh, got that he saw his uh, devotional attitude means it means uh, in the devotee's case uh, also uh, in certain time we may develop that kind of means some devotee who have you you are telling because he had some pa- sukriti in previous life and he suddenly started remembering narada muni and uh, uh, uh this is the muni when it happens uh, suddenly in, in some case prabhu so can for devotees also it happen that suddenly uh, yeah they can manifest your devotional service till the time because my understanding he had some uh, offenses he did because of that he had got that demon demonic body but when his offenses nullify and then after that he got the uh, remember his devotional uh, past life so go yeah that's true so is it for a devotee for utrasur was it because of his offense that he was um, covered over and then and that often spirit expired and that's how his devotion manifested yes that's true if for everything that happens there can be multiple levels of explanation hmm. say if somebody gets malaria we could say that this person got malaria because the mosquito bit them and some microbe infected that person but now in that same house there might be so many people staying did the mosquito bite only this person now we may say that actually no 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 but uh, you know everybody has different immunity levels but sometimes two people if you measure their immunity levels they may be exactly similar also but um, still one person gets malaria the other one gets malaria so it is that there is also some purva karma involved mm-hmm. and even when cure is happening two people may take the same medicine but they may not get cured in the same time one person may get cured in 2 3 days another may take 2 3 months to get cured also it's a problem particular kind of disease is there one disease may lead to another disease or it may lead to some complication so we some we usually say that karma is uh, the system of co- action and reaction which is true but it is not a simple system it is not that action a will lead to reaction b when action a can be combined with the reactions to past actions and then it will lead to reaction b so it may be that this life action and previous life action may combine together to give a particular reaction so if an ordinary person say over eat sweet they might just feel sleepy for some time or they might just gain a little weight but if a diabetic person eats sweet 
for them they might get a severe health attack by that so it's that their eating sweet is not the only factor which is causing to cause the situation it is the overall health of the health condition also so similarly we can look at multiple layers of explanation for things so yes it was definitely the uh, the offense which had covered him over because of which he had to get a demonic body but the point i was making here is that what brought about the transformation uh, parvati did not say that at a particular for a particular duration this curse will remain and then the curse will go away like nalakur and mani green uh, for them narmu specifically promised them that lord krishna will deliver you that krishna will deliver you in a future life and when you are living as trees they also did not say but there we can see krishna acting specifically and bringing out those trees in the yamalaj tree so that's how nalakur mani green were delivered but there is no such specific statement made with parvati so we can look at a, a circumstantial level and circumstantial level actually we will not see any sudden change but what we do see is that when he is in that final fight his consciousness suddenly shifts from indra to vishnu and we can trace this back to the previous life so what offenses do is offenses basically they block our access to our own devotion it's like there's a poor person who has no money at all as a wealthy person who has a lot of money they in the treasury but they lost the key to the treasury or somebody has a credit card but they have lost the code of the credit card and they just they have the money but they can't access it so like that what offenses do is that in the word offense is related with the word fence basically there is a fence of proper behavior when we transgress that fence and go out and behave improperly especially we behave maliciously trying to put down some person then that is when we when we violate that fence then what happens is the fence which is initially a protector for us like for dropad for sita uh, the lakshman rekha was the protector for her but then when she came out then ravana abducted her and took her to lanka and lanka became a like a fence for her it was surrounded by the ocean and she just couldn't go anywhere so initially the fence that protects our devotion that protects us from sin if we violate that to offense then the offense changes the nature of the fence so that we become fenced out of our devotion so that we get trapped somewhere else in a particular consciousness that our devotion our own devotion is no longer accessible to us but when that offense is for, of a man the right time comes then actually we become aware and then we move beyond the offense uh we we are moving on the result of the offense so we were looking now if if we are committed some offenses also we don't know about what we may commit in the previous life and we can look at the circumstances situation and we can look at what rasul did and we can try to do that we can try to raise our consciousness from the horizontal to the vertical is it answer question uh yes yes prabhu for that uh, we need krishna's mercy yes i mean so he will create the such uh, situation uh, that uh, we can realize yes prabhu yes we need krishna's mercy but we also need to make our endeavor now mitrasur could have stayed consumed by indra so when something prodded from him prodded him from within you know raise your consciousness towards krishna he did that and that's how he was elevated uh okay uh, okay thank you so much prabhu i have one question regarding yesterday's class uh the last can question, I ask does, the last question does, uh, after this question is probably uh i yes prabhu so nobody has to my last letter prabhu yes one please go ahead ah uh, okay okay prabhu 
Uh, Prabhuji, you were telling self-consciousness and consciousness and then uh, unconsciousness in uh, yesterday's class. Uh, my question is in uh, regarding uh, for the, also you were telling the samskara. And then some samskara, I mean some calls are uh, the samskara, especially I wanted to ask regarding kids. Uh, they brought some samskara from the previous, I mean some kind of uh, thing in previous life and they will learn uh, from this life, means impression. So what hmm. I just want to know, uh, for the, uh, especially in the kids growing Krishna consciousness, uh, I mean uh, how we can give the better impression in Krishna consciousness. I, because you were telling the main thing, they will only get some kind of karma to get, go further in Krishna consciousness. But how we can create that impression? I mean, that is only effect, yes. It's uh, external, you're telling uh, external uh, activities, means uh, physical activities is depend on the, um, what we teach, our parents teach, and then uh, yeah. internal consciousness, uh, they will get from their previous life, yes, you're telling? No, internal consciousness is shaped by previous life as well as this life. It is not that one is it. I was saying that consciousness is shaped by both external externals that we have as well as the internals. It is not just this or that. It is this and that. So, as far as our children are concerned, how can we give them devotional impressions? Yes, there are various samskaras. But more important than the samskaras is the overall culture and conduct. If we ourselves are devoted to Krishna and our children see that we are affectionate towards them and our devotion makes us better parents makes us more loving more kind more understanding more caring for them as parents then they, they will remember that even if in the teenage the hormones start rising within them and they drag them in this other direction they will come back in the right direction uh, eventually by the impressions Generally, one, one living being can influence another living being only in three broad ways. You could say enlightenment, encouragement, and engagement. Enlightenment means we can tell you knowledge of this choice will lead to this consequence, this choice will lead to that consequence, that choice will lead to that consequence. That's enlightenment. Then there is engagement. Engagement means, okay, if this is the path you want to this is the path that is good for you. How can you practically go along that path? Now, if you want the kids to practice, children to practice bhakti, now they cannot come and, they normally, when, some of them may come and hear classes for adults, but they need some forum for themselves also. Something where maybe they can do drama, they can do some kids, and they can hear classes for their level. They can get their level of association. There's some kind of facility for them to practice. So encourage, so that we need engagement, enlightenment and encouragement. Everybody needs to be positively encouraged in the practice of bhakti. If our interaction with them is only do this, do this, why are you not doing that, why are you not doing that, then that is quite discouraging. If they do even some small thing in bhakti and we encourage them for that, then that is how uh, they will move forward. So if we are doing these three things, we are doing our part. Enlightenment, engagement, encouragement, if we are providing, then we are doing our part. And then each soul is a soul with free will. And sooner or later, each soul will turn towards Krishna. So we can facilitate that from our side. But we don't have to become overly attached. And we don't have to become insecure. And if our children are not taking a bhakti, we shouldn't think of that as a personal failure. Because then we may pressurize them too much to practice bhakti. And our own security, insecurity cannot be the basis for anyone else's spirituality. Our own insecurity means, oh, what will people think of me? What will the devotee community, others think of me if my child doesn't become a devotee? And that insecurity, if because of that we pressurize our children to become devotees, then they will catch it that we are not really concerned about them so much. We are concerned about our own reputation. So everybody goes through various stages in their spiritual life. And not everybody is ready to take a spiritual life immediately. Even in 5,000 years ago, the 
the pious culture was there even at that time most people would live pious life even at that time devotees were rare so now kaliyuga is the age of adharma not even the age of punya so now we cannot expect to change what is the traditional order of things and expect that everybody whom we come in contact with through relationships or through association will take up bhakti so each soul at their own level of spiritual evolution and they will take up gradually so we keep the door open for them and they will walk through the door at the right time if not immediately if not consistently throughout their life there might be sometimes they go off track but soon they will come back because the impressions will be there and the impressions will 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 draw them back to krishna thank you very much pranthraj shrimad bhagavatam ki jai thank you so much prabhu Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.